Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you our curriculum for the 2018-2020 school years. Um, as you saw in a previous video how we map out our math and science tracks, I'll link that video below just in case you did not watch that, I wanted to show you what our math looks like for the next two years, okay? Can this change? Yes, it can. If my son is not grasping, utilizing the current curriculum and resources that I will show you today, we will go ahead and we will change up that curriculum. But as of right now, these are our basic core curriculum choices for the fifth grade and sixth grade school year, which will take us from 2018 to 2019. Yeah. We have lots of supplemental curriculums and resources that we use for the purpose of teaching and providing additional examples or help for math and science. However, I'm only going to show you our core. Our core math curriculum is going to be Saxon 7-6. I like Saxon math because it is to the point. It's black and white. There isn't a lot of um, pictures. There isn't hardly, or there isn't any pictures. Um, and it can be self-taught. The child will simply go to a chapter, read the chapter instructions, read the examples from the chapter, um, and then go about and do the examples. Give me one second, guys. I thought this video would be child free. One second. All right, where was I? I do apologize about that. But the reason why I like Saxon math is because it's black and white, it's clear, it's straight to the point, there isn't a lot of pictures or colors to distract my son, and there isn't a lot of different types of um, concepts being taught at one time. I also love their spiral approach method. Spiral approach basically means Whatever the child learns at any point in time during the curriculum, they will always meet that topic again later on down the line. They will always go through previously learned concepts just to ensure that they have not forgotten anything, especially if those concepts build upon one another in effort to understand something further down the line. As I mentioned earlier, the child just reads the lesson. The lesson lays it out thoroughly. It gives them examples of how to complete the um, problems that they're learning within the lesson. And then they can proceed to go ahead and complete their practice problems and their problem sets. And this is the method that Saxon Math takes throughout their curriculum. And again, I love that. Thus far, my son doesn't have an issue with Saxon. When we were after schooling, we utilized Saxon math, I want to say 5-4. We utilized that in the third and in the fourth grade. And, you know, it, it served itself to, to, to be pretty well. It served itself well. One thing my son doesn't like is the number of problems that the book requires them to complete for each chapter. However, I tell him that the only way, in my opinion, for him to master a concept and thoroughly understand a concept is for him to go ahead and practice those concepts. And he will see those same concepts later on down the line. Okay? Um, and I love Saxon Math because it also uh, um, creates an opportunity for reading comprehension. Because my son can read the work independently, he has to pay attention to the details. He has to um, comprehend what they're explaining in order for him to apply it within the problem sets and practice problems that they have for him to do. So that aspect sometimes he doesn't like. However, he's doing just fine with it. And how we approach this curriculum, we have our instruction, or I'm sorry, his independent days, as you have heard in many other videos, are on Mondays, um, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. So that's when he will 
do the problems or the chapters that I assign him. He normally does one chapter on each of those days. And if he feels like it, he can do two chapters on each of those days. During our instructional days, which is the days that I teach him, give him examples, provide assistance, on those days, we will go over his incorrect problems and we may do a lesson um, within the book together. That way I am um, modeling my expectation for how he should be taking his time and how he should be approaching learning each lesson and how he should go about solving the answers and writing the problems out in order in a way that will help him um, understand why he got a problem wrong. If he just writes the answer, he doesn't really know why he got the problem wrong. What step did he miss? So by him writing out the steps to the solution, which he does not like, he likes to just give me the answer because he says I can do it in my head. But if he gets it wrong, I have no way of telling where the error took place. So again, by him writing out the solution steps, we can go back to it and we can say this is where the mistake was. So on our instruction days, when I go over a chapter with him or we do one chapter together, I am modeling um, what he is expected to do when he's doing this on his own. In addition to Saxon math, my son will be completing the Life of Fred intermediate series. He is currently on jelly beans, so he will complete this. He did not finish it up um, during our after schooling process in the fourth grade. So he will finish this up and then he will enter the um, intermediate series, okay? And the intermediate series, which is for middle school students, is liver, kidney, and mind shaft. Will he finish all these three within the fifth grade? Maybe not. I see him completing the jelly beans, the liver, and the kidneys absolutely within the um, fifth grade. And he may have to start this or um, finish it up within the sixth grade, okay? In addition to that, he loves Life of Fred. And the way we do this on his independent days, he reads a chapter and he does the problem. They give him one or two, three, four, five problems, but he said they're so simple he can do them really quick. So he'll do the problems. He doesn't have to turn it in. However, when we um, meet on our instructional days, I will um, randomly select a problem from each chapter that he has completed and we will do it together on the board. So that's how we do Life of Fred. And it takes about two to three months for him to complete one book um, based on how he um, spaces it out. So two to three months to complete one book. In addition to that, within the fifth grade, for challenge, we're doing Beast Academy level four, okay? Beast Academy, you can look online to see reviews. I think I've done a review a while back on Beast Academy, but I love this math curriculum. It is extremely challenging. It is hard. It will cause your child to think, become frustrated, and be proud of themselves once they figure out that they can do it and they actually solve the problem. Beast Academy, each level, they have level two, three, four, and five now. Each level has four parts. I'm only gonna show you part A. He is gonna complete A through D, which is considered a complete series within a level. So he will do A through D within the fifth grade, and he will do level um, five within the sixth grade. The reason why I downgraded him from fifth to fourth is because it is extremely challenging. Um, he has to think, it takes him time. He can take 20 minutes on one problem, guys, and he can take a few days on a, um, a, a page or two of what I assign him. It's that challenging. It may seem simple, it may seem easy, but once your child dives into it, it causes them to think outside the box. It causes them to go through a lot of trial and error to figure out the problem or the, so the, the problem and the solution. Within the level four, level four has, um, again, four parts. Part A, which is what I'm showing you today, is shapes, multiplication, and exponents. B is counting, division, logic. C, fractions, factors, integers. D, 
fractions, decimals, probability. This is normally what a traditional fifth grader would learn anyway in the public school. But again, this program is extremely advanced, okay? So it comes with a guide. The guide is a comic book feel, okay? It's graphic, um, it, well, not graphic, but it has lots of graphics in it. Um, they teach the lesson um, through these characters. My son loves it. Um, he reads this just for fun. He laughs, he says it's funny, some of the jokes are really funny, okay? So again, do not allow the comic book feel or the color to, um, to give you the inclination that this program is for everyone and that this program is easy. If your child is easily frustrated and they give up, this may not be the program for you. If your child is unable to sit down for 20, 30 minutes at one time to figure something out, even if they're a bit frustrated, it's okay, then this may not be the program for you. This is a very challenging program, in my opinion. If your child can do those things, challenge them. And if you have to go down a grade level or two or three, I, I promise you, it's fine. It's all about critical thinking with these programs. It's all about analysis with this program. So once the child reads um, the necessary pages for the assignment, so let's say they have them read page 12 through page, let's see where it stops here. Page 12 through, let's see, page 28, okay? As an example, that would be the lesson. And then they would go in the book and they would have to do the pages associated with the lesson, okay? So this is the textbook and this is the workbook. And my son writes in the book, okay? So again, they may have a few pages to complete, but that does not mean that they can do it within one sitting. They may need a few days to complete um, the page numbers that are assigned to them by you if you wanna do it that way, or you can go with the flow of the book and have and assign the pages based on what the book tells you to assign them, okay? So for example, it says here in the guide, read pages 68 through 79. And in this practice book, you're gonna do pages 71 through 80. My son is not gonna sit there and do pages 71 through 80 in one sitting. However, I may say these are the pages that are required for these two weeks. So I'll give him two weeks to complete those pages or I may give him a week to complete those pages. It just depends on how hard the concept is. And then I will check it if he has it incorrect, just like with Saxon math, if he has it incorrect, he will have another opportunity to correct it. And then if he still gets it incorrect once I check it the second time, then we will do it together on the board and talk it through, work it out on the board during our instruction time. The lovely thing I like about this Beast Academy curriculum is that they have the answers in the back of the book. And they, own, and they not only give you the answers, but they give you um, the process and the steps of how they actually um, reached that solution. And I love that. They also provide tips for you. So as you're going through the problem sets with your child and you need assistance to help them understand what they're being asked to do, they have tips back here to also um, help you teach it to your children. So I love it for that reason. Yes, guys, when we did level three in the fourth grade, <laughs> I absolutely had to provide assistance to my son by going to the back of the book and figuring out how in the heck did they get an answer or how in the heck do we even start the process of trying to figure out the answer, okay? So my son did have to complete level 3D this year in the fifth grade and then Again, we're going to start with level four in the fifth grade, which we already did, and he will complete A through D. If he doesn't complete all of it, we'll finish it up in the um, fifth grade, okay? So again, that's what our fifth grade curriculum is. It's Beast Academy for Challenge. It's Life of Fred, Jelly Beans, and the Intermediate Series for fun and reading comprehension, and he gets a kick out of the character. And Saxon math is our basic 
foundation core program. Okay. With any of these, if there are concepts that he does not understand, I like to give him videos. This, this is the video or set of videos that I like to have my son listen to. We've been watching these videos since the third grade. The teacher or the instructor that they use, he's clear, it's easy to understand. My son says it's, it's pretty simple. Hopefully you can see this. But here are all the topics. And again, this will take you through, I think, third grade math, fourth grade math, fifth grade math. It'll take you all the way up to um, the conclusion of pre-algebra, in my opinion. All the concepts are there. Okay? So remember I said that we have a two-year path for my son when it comes to math? I just showed you fifth grade. After fifth grade, what happens? After fifth grade, once we complete that, we'll enter sixth grade. And whatever he doesn't complete in the fifth grade, it's gonna roll right into the sixth grade. And then we're going to do life of Fred fractions, and we're going to do life of Fred decimals and percent, okay? Along with this curriculum, we'll continue to use these videos because all the concepts are there, right? In addition to that, we're going to do level five for Beast Academy. So we're going to bring back Beast Academy, but we're going to do level five in the sixth grade. Okay. Once we get a hang of that, I'm going to bring in Saxon Math Pre-Algebra one and a half. My goal is to do at least half of this curriculum within the sixth grade or the beginning of the sixth grade. So between Life of Fred, watching these videos, and doing Level 5 of Beast Academy, our core curriculum will be Algebra 1 half. So this will take us through, I would say, about the first six months of the sixth grade. What happens next? What I would like to do is stop using Algebra 1 and a half and transition him to an online course that gives credit for pre-algebra from the art of problem solving. The Art of Problem Solving is a company that produces Beast Academy. They recommend that before you start their pre-algebra program, they have two parts, parts one and part two of pre-algebra, that you try your best to complete all of these series, all of these elementary series. Get into level five and get halfway through level five before you attempt to start their pre-algebra program. So at the six month mark, my goal is to already be there. Sorry about that. I forgot where I left off. I had to go um, attend to baby girl. But um, I think I was saying they want you to complete the Beast Academy level five before entering into their pre-algebra program. So at the six month mark within our sixth grade year, we'll, we should be halfway through their level five Beast Academy. And we'll continue that program or we'll continue using that curriculum until it's done but I want to enter into the Art of Problem Solving pre-algebra program. They have two parts. Each part is about three months long, I think. It's an online course. And I wanna say it's three to four months long. So we will attempt to do part one. If he does well in part one of pre-algebra for the Art of Problem Solving when he is in the sixth grade, then we will go ahead and do part two. We'll be done with our pre-algebra by the beginning of seventh grade, and we will go into whatever math comes next. If he does not do well in the art of problem solving pre-algebra, that just means the program is too difficult for him. And we will continue and complete the pre-algebra um, with Saxon math algebra one half okay the art of problem solving and beast academy it's all about problem solving guys it's all about logic it's all about um analysis it's all about utilizing information that you've learned or that you have to figure out um um how to solve new problems that or new top or yeah i'm sorry how to solve new problems with topics you haven't been introduced yet um with so if, if he doesn't do well in that, it just means it's challenging, too challenging. We'll stop, I'm not gonna force him. And then again, we'll continue with that. I hope this makes sense, guys. I hope you understand um, our 
um, to your curriculum for math. Again, this is how we are going to go ahead and do our um, fifth grade and our sixth grade curriculum for the 2018-2020 school year. And again, I will link um, in the description box below how we plan on, um, not how we plan on, but how we map out, how we map out our um, math tracks. I'm also gonna do a video for our science because I do something very, very similar for our sciences where we also map out um, what we want our sciences to look like. So guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment box below. I tried my best to provide as much information as possible. I know many of you may look at this and say, this is ridiculous. This is homeschool. This is not public school. What are you doing? I'm doing what's best for my son. I'm doing what's best for what he is able and capable to do. We mapped it out. We figured these were the best tools based on how he learns best. And um, we figured if it's not broken, why fix it? If anything doesn't work for him or work for us during these next two years, like I said earlier in the video, we will absolutely um, address that and we will absolutely find other um, curriculum to use to get us to the end goal that we think is best for our son and our children. If this doesn't work for you, it's quite okay. Do what's best for your child. If your child isn't mathy, they don't like math, they struggle in math, by all means, don't do this, guys. Figure out what, what works best for you. There are dozens of curriculums out there, math curriculums out there, that may best suit the needs of your son or your daughter. And I ask that you do the research, talk to them, talk to others to figure out what's best. Again, as always, be blessed and make it.